the sewing machine is the appliance that's going to last longer than anything else in your home. When people come in here and start telling me about their sewing machines, I was like, well, I bought this when so-and-so was born. Mm -hmm. So that just, that goes to show you how big of a deal it is when a customer buys a new sewing machine, because it's like a era of their life, you know? Mm -hmm. Hi, this is Kim from Dorothy's Daughter. Today, I have the privilege of interviewing Brad from Ken Sewing Center. And they are a sponsor of this channel. So sit back, grab your cup of coffee, and let's get our sewing machine questions answered. Brad, can you tell us a little bit about yourself and your company and what you do? Yes, ma'am. I've worked for Ken Sewing Center now for 22 years. I started back in May of 2002. I was originally a construction worker and work was kind of slow in that time frame. And I was just kind of looking for something to do. So I so had the paper, come start working on vacuum cleaners, involved in working on sewing machines. Then I started selling sewing machines. Now I'm, I've become the store manager. So around here, all the repairmen are salespeople too. We, it works out great because being a repairman, you know how the machines work and you know what they're capable of and you know the features and you know what they're supposed to do. So everybody kind of just sells and does the repairs here that are repairmen and it works great as far as deliveries and setup and things like that. So that's where I came from. That's great. So, you sell just about every model of machine down there? Yes, ma'am. We currently sell pretty much all the models. We're, we're in the works now of starting with Bakken and Faf, and mm -hmm. that deal should be done by the end of next week, and we'll be a dealer for them as well. Oh, That'll awesome. pretty much cover all the major brands. All right. Well, I'm going to start off with one of my questions that I had, and then I have a bunch of viewer questions, and some of the viewer questions are ones I would have asked anyway. So nowadays, since COVID, all right, I have no repairman in my town. No sewing machine. I have to drive two hours to get anyone to take care of my machines. So I've tried to keep them as clean as possible to minimize having to do anything with them. But do you have a mail order service or what would you recommend for someone? Because I think a lot of those little mom and pop shops have kind of closed up. And I, th I think some of them didn't weather the storm too well. Yeah. But what's your suggestion and I guess how, what, what maintenance should we do ourselves and what sh should we seek a, a repairman for? Do we send our machines somewhere? What, what do we do? There are things that you do need to do yourself for your sewing machines, and there's things that a repairman needs to do. I would recommend getting a machine serviced about once every year, two years minimum, because whether your machine sits in the closet or you use it every day, the oil is going to dry up and gum up and get sticky and needs to be cleaned out and reeled. And yes, we do offer a mail and so, uh, recommit your machine to us. There's a form on our website, kinsomacenter.com, or you could give us a call. You would ship your machine to us. We'll go through it. We'll give you a free estimate. We'll check it out and we'll send it back. Now, there's some things that are very important when you do send a machine to us. And the number one thing is packing the machine well. If you don't have the, the factory packing, I would recommend taking it to a UPS or FedEx store and letting them pack it for you and in turn mm. that will mm. allow you to get it insured so if you insure a machine and it's not pack well or in a good box it gets to us damaged they're not going to pay the claim but if they pack it for you or it's in a factory yeah. box they're going to pay a claim and we do see them get damaged sometimes it's very rare but it's mainly getting damaged from a lack of packing but okay. that's important it's going to be packed well when it comes back in insured so it's real important to save your packaging. Yes, ma'am. I would definitely save my packaging on all my machines. <laughs> I know. My, after my husband passed, we had a sea of electronic boxes that he saved from everything, from a radio to, you know. And I said, well, I'm not getting rid of the sewing machine boxes because you just never know. Never know. Definitely yep. not. Yeah. 
so that was one question I had. And then, do you know roughly the cost of having a machine just tuned and cleaned? Yes, ma'am. The basic service charge on embroidery machines that are single deal embroidery machines, sergers, embroidery machines, all those machines like that are going to be ninety nine dollars. Okay. That's, That's going to cover cool. oiling, greasing, adjusting everything. Okay. We. We also get a discounted rate on shipping. So shipping it back to you would normally fall in the 20 to $40 range. And that's insured fully to cover it if for a complete loss. Okay. All right. That's very reasonable for, I mean, I think I used to pay 125 before that little sewing machine repair guy left town. So I have a question here from Roberta. She asks, does it harm your bobbin case? to adjust the tension up and down all the time. This would be on a, an older machine that you have to unscrew the bobbin. Is it harmful to do that a lot? Definitely not. These springs that are put in these machines are, are springs and springs are made to move. And that's what they do. They move back and forth, it's tampered. So you can, you can tighten it and loosen it all you want to and you're not gonna affect the spring in any way. I would recommend, you know, if you're comfortable adjusting your bobbin case tension, that, that's a great way to change different threads and do different types of sewing with, you know, different types of needles and different types of applications. I think it's great if you're comfortable adjusting your bobbin tension to do that. Okay, cool. That's like old fashioned, what we learned <laughs> back in the day. I don't know if I have any machines that do that anymore. I, yes, I do. I have one. <laughs> yes, ma'am. So what is a basic cleaning routine for a machine, um, like what we can do ourselves. I know you say once a year to send it in, but like mm -hmm. just, I, I try to like sort of clean mine up after every project or so, or maybe every two project if the first, you know, if they were little projects or whatever, but what would you yep. suggest that we do? The main thing is going to be getting the lint out of the machines. So if you've got a, your sewn on something fuzzy or it's got a lot of lint, I would recommend taking that needle plate off and brushing it out, blowing it out, or vacuuming it out. Just getting all that stuff out of there because that lint, once it mixes with oil or mixes with, you know, even lint by itself, it packs together. As it packs together, it gets like concrete. Mm. When it gets in between those feed dogs and start the feed dogs start hitting the plate and it just starts packing it down, you know, it's pretty much metal against metal. And that's what damages machines more than anything is that lint build up inside there. There are machines that can be oiled. There are machines that are not supposed to be oiled. I would look at the manufacturer's recommendations on that and oil it according. There are some machines that only a certified service person would need to oil because if you get oil on some of these sensors or some of these encoders, it could cause you major problems. But always go by what the manufacturer says. If you got a question, mm -hmm. you can give one of us a call here too, and we can we can walk you through doing it. We can. We can explain to you, you know, what you can and can't do. We'll be glad to help you. I have a, a Skyline 7 Janome, and mm -hmm. I think the, the manual says not to oil it. And then I've seen videos online where it says to just put one drop of oil there underneath the bobbin case. Is that something? Yes, yes ma'am. It's fine to do that. It is good to do that. I know a lot of the... All the Janome machines, you can put that drop of oil inside that bobbin case. Janome and Brother Juki for sure. Mm -hmm. And you're, it's going to tell you when to do it. You know, you're going to hear it. It's going to, you know, you're going to be in tune with your machine. You're going to hear when it starts to chatter or make mm -hmm. a little extra noise. It's okay to put that drop of oil in there. But when you start putting oil in different places, like under covers and things like that, it's when you run into a problem. But yeah, I would recommend oiling it like you're talking about. I don't know. I have a Serger and and it came with oil so i know it's okay and yes. so i kind of just hit the all the moving parts after i exactly it. and honestly it'll sometimes just stop performing and then cleaning it'll be fine then yes ma'am it's but, like so when that, i get my car serviced or my truck serviced it always seems to run better i don't know if it's in my head or not but you can tell a difference when a sewing machine comes in here and you run it and when you get done running it and it sounds like it's supposed to and everything's free. It's so many little small moving parts that need oil. But yes, ma'am, they're oil and it does a lot of good. 
Okay. Very good. Canned air, yes or no? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Before we got our air compressors years ago, we used canned air. Canned air is dry air. It has an accelerant in it. If you turn it upside down, you'll see the accelerant come out, and it will be in the form of pretty much ice on whatever it gets on. But it dry, it's completely dry. It dries instantly. I would recommend not turning it upside down. Use it. Use the nozzle. Blow it out. I would try to, when I blow it out, not blow th- and try to blow them out of the machine. You know, mm-hmm. just small sprays to keep it from going down into the machine, getting back in there further. But yes, it's fine to use. There's some places that you can't brush out. Air is going to be a good way to get it out. That's what we use. So I have one of these little vacuums. So yes. Brand is Simplicity, I think. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yes, had- ma'am. This has holes where you can actually control and make sure that you don't get too much suction. Yes. And I have a yes. bunch of these little, um, this has a brush on the end. Is it okay mm-hmm. to use these or like maybe? 100%. Brush? Okay. Yeah. Those little micro attachment kits, we sell them. I think they're $20. Mm-hmm. They'll fit any type of vacuum cleaner you have. Um, there's adapters that go on there and they fit onto your vacuum cleaner. You go on our website and get them. But yes, I would really yeah. recommend that. I had gotten the the tubing and stuff and used it on my home vacuum cleaner for a while. And then after, it was just a pain to drag it in here. <laughs> so yes, I just got this little guy and I just put it underneath my machines and pull it out every time I sort of, especially my serger because it really gunks up really fast. Yes, ma'am. That, that's perfect. That's great. Yeah. Right sort of saw videos online that do that, but I guess I never really asked an expert. So. <laughs> yes, ma'am. <laughs> okay. Deanna asks, I know that everything about use and cleaning of machines is in hours of usage, but at what hour is it time to replace a machine? It can't be that it just doesn't work. It must have a time limit, like a one, two, three hour runtime. I'm not really clear. Uh, yeah. That would depend a lot on the machine, I'm guessing. I guess it would, but the thing about a sewing machine is a sewing machine is the appliance that's going to last longer than anything else in your home. Everybody, every family's got the old black sewing machine in the cabinet that belonged to the grandmother or come mm-hmm. from years ago that's like a family heirloom. And you can get those machines out. You can oil them and you could take off sewing with them and you can sew pretty much anything you want to with them. I mean, they're heavy duty, they're great machines, but those machines have lasted for years and years and years. If you take care of your machine properly, it'll do the same thing. So I don't really think that there's a time frame on how long a machine is going to be any good. You know, as long as they're making parts for it, as long as it can be serviced, I don't Mm -hmm. think you can wear a sewing machine out if it's taken care of properly. Very now, good. there are exceptions. I've got um, some customers that do alterations and things like that where they run their machines like eight hours a day and the paints wore off the bed of them. And <laughs> I've seen somewhere some of those out, but they've got hours and hours and hours. But I yeah. don't know of a time frame that would be, I would want to get rid of it if it's still working. Yeah, I think some of us might do it eight hours a day. <laughs> <laughs> yes, ma'am. Oh, yeah, I'm sure you do. I'm pretty, I, well, let's see, maybe four or five. I, I wouldn't say eight hours, but that'd be a yes, lot. But um, especially just that's all time sitting on a machine, not pinning and cutting and all that other stuff. So. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So I had another person put a late question on there today, and it's she adjusted her bobbin, and now she doesn't know how to get it back. What I would recommend doing in the case of you've adjusted your bobbin to where you don't really know where it's at is I would sew with the machine with my tension on auto or four or, you know, whatever the standard setting is on your machine. Mm-hmm. You could call me. I'm sure you'll put my contact information up there if mm-hmm. you have any questions. But what I would do is I would adjust my tension on the top to where it's supposed to be. I would sew with it. I would look at the bottom of the material. If the top thread showing on the bottom, what you would need to do is loosen the bobbin case tension. If the bottom three is showing on the top, you would need to tighten the bobbin case tension. And I would tighten in quarter turn increments and I would watch it. And you're slowly going to see it kind of moving back to the center and tying that knot in the center. 
because what's happened is it's the top thread and the bottom thread are playing tug of war with each other. Mm -hmm. So when you see that knot coming through to the top, the top's pulling more than the bottom. When you see the bottom coming through or the top coming through the bottom, the bottom's pulling more. So you would need to loosen that bottom to make it pull that knot up. Kind of that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. I guess somebody told me once and I, I, I don't have, I don't have actual statistics on this, but it seems to me to be true that if you're having issues with the top thread, it's usually the bobbin. And if you're having issues with the bottom thread, it's usually the, the top thread. That's, and I, yeah. you know, about 90% of the time, um, a, I think a lot of problems I've had over the years are just simply using the wrong needle. And yes, ma'am. Yeah. Uh, that that does and there are defective needles sometimes needles are problematic and the easiest way to fix your machine a lot of times is putting a new needle in it unthreading the top of the machine and rethreading it back completely so that that solves a lot of problems and mm -hmm. um but yes ma'am your needle that that's the first thing i change when a machine comes in i put a new one in it and we start from there okay very good okay so let's switch gears to purchasing machines and I know you have a store and you are a sponsor of this channel so I do need to disclose that as I'm speaking but um, yes, I uh, that my next purchase I think is going to be a new cover stitch I have a brother that is like basic 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 it's one that's pretty highly rated but it does not I mean it has zero bells and whistles it it's yes it, I'm kind of outgrowing it. And so what, because I hear different things, you know, I love Janome, but then I've heard sometimes their cover stitches aren't that great. Or is there a, a brand of cover stitch that you would recommend? Yes, ma'am. In a cover stitch machine, there's three brands I would recommend. Okay. And not in any kind of particular order, I don't guess, because they're going to be equal as far as the quality goes, in my opinion. I would say Juki, Janome, and Baby Lock are okay. going to make your three better cover stitch machines. Okay. Janome has a professional grade cover stitch machine that's going to yep. do give you that what it looks like on the bottom, on the top and bottom, if you would like, for decorative type sewing. Mm -hmm. um, and Juki is just an all around workhorse machine. And Baby Lot is going to have the self-threading machines that are going to be great. But for somebody like you that does so for eight, 10 hours a day, those machines are going to hold up. Okay. Baby Lock has the air thread even for the um, cover stitch? They do. Yes, ma'am. Wow. That's, that's awesome to know. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I've been kind of doing my homework lately. And um, I think probably sometime later this year, I'm going to invest in a new one. And I have a friend who was called me wanting to know about, a, she wants to learn how to sew. What she particularly wants to learn how to sew are dog beds, which she wants to sell. And she wants to make them out of denim. So you, yes. know, I, you, you need to have something that will go through, you know, heavy. And her budget, though, is only like in the 300 range. So what's a good all-around machine that would fit that price range or is there one or um... there is yes ma'am that's going to be like the, that budget is going to be a starting point of a good heavy duty machine i would recommend in her case a Janome machine mm -hmm. it would be the Janome hd 1000 hd stands for heavy duty mm -hmm. and i've got five dogs myself and i know those i know what you're talking about the dog biz my wife loves to buy them but uh she doesn't sew, but maybe we should not change that one day. But yeah, that HD 1000 is an all metal machine. It has that bobbin case like you were talking about, you were asking me about to begin with, the old school, just heavy duty oscillating hook. And mm -hmm. it's going to power through whatever you put under it. Okay. So in the Janome line, they've got the HD model machines. And I think you actually have the HD 5050 in it. Yeah. It's a yeah, great machine too. Review on that's coming up. Uh, here probably in the next week. So. Cool. But anything that says heavy duty would be great. Okay. This, those little singer heavy duty, they are like so cheap. They, I told her, I don't well, know. 
they they seem I'm, so, I'm glad you brought that up too because there 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 is a difference when you go to the singer heavy duty machines those machines run so fast i mean they're they run very fast but there are plastic machines that have plastic parts and these that I would, i'm talking about they they have all metal that's what that's one thing i definitely look into make sure it's all metal okay very good i have a dinosaur machine <laughs> that I used to pull out a lot, but I don't much anymore. And the last time it just, I feel like it might be the power cord. I'm not sure. But I have, a, it's a, you might remember this model, but it's a Combi DX. So it actually has a really two thread serger, which was like useless on the backside and you flip it around. But the machine part of that was gold i mean it will go through anything and recently it just wasn't it wasn't performing as well as i as it used to so but um those machines are very unique I, i've worked on a lot of them i probably haven't seen one in five or six years but they were unique machines they were very cool the combi machine I, that brings back some memories but you're right it, it you've got to be pretty strong to get one of those out and set it up on the table yeah i mean it's super heavy and you yeah. know that my main machine is the skyline seven and i've really enjoyed having the 50 50 especially been working on jeans and you know one can be set up for top stitching and the other one for just sewing and it's really nice so yes man um yeah and i used to drag that thing out and and now i don't have to <laughs> lift such a yes man <laughs> But, you got a good good pair there though. The, yeah. The S7 and the 5050 go great together. Yeah, I, my husband um before he passed, he took me to a sewing machine store and and the one that we used to have here in town and um just surprised me and told me to pick one out. And I originally I looked at the S9, but at the time I didn't really want to do embroidery at the time. I've since gotten mm -hmm. an embroidery machine, but I don't like combination machines because I feel like you have to do so many things to get them to the other usage that it, it's better to just have a, another one. Yes. But I that's it seemed like it was almost the same except it didn't have the embroidery. So yes, I've been there yet. Right. had it for probably four years now and I love it. Yeah, it's a great, great machine. So is this fifty fifty. For somebody who doesn't have the budget for a Skyline Seven, it it's mm -hmm. I haven't had put anything in there that it hasn't sewn through yet. So yeah, there. and it's a great machine to take to class too. I don't know if many people you have many classes in the areas where people are watching, but it's something that you can pick up. Probably weighs fourteen pounds and take to class with you. And all mm -hmm. your feet, well, I, I wouldn't say all your feet because your your machine's a nine millimeter and it's a seven millimeter, but mm -hmm. a lot of the things will interchange. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's kind of funny because I also have an old Magnolia um, uh -huh. 7330, I think it is. And yes, when I had that, I got the, the whole big thing of, of feet. And um, now those are usable again. <laughs> so, yes. Yep. Yeah. So that that's kind of nice. So if you want to accumulate the, the sewing machine, the serger, the cover stitch, what order would you buy those in? Of course, you have to have the sewing machine first, but would you get the yes. serger next and then the cover stitch? Or would you try to get one that had serges and cover stitches? I know Baby Lock has some that do that. They do have them that do that, but kind of going back to what you're saying, that when you get something that does multiple things, there's so many things you got to do to go from one point to the other. And in my opinion, from working on the machines and selling them and demonstrating them, I, I like the idea of having a separate serger and a separate cover stitch machine. Mm -hmm. Because when you get a machine that's going to do both, it gets very complicated because instead of having two loopers, you're going to have three. Instead mm -hmm. of having about three different ways to thread your machine, you're going to have seven or eight. Mm -hmm. um, and you're going to have to put the needles in different configurations. There's a lot of different things to figure out when you change from one to the other. Mm -hmm. And 
it seems like it would be easier for me to just hop from one machine to the next. Now, some people may not have the space and that changes everything, but mm -hmm. you know, and then, then when you start talking about the five, $6,000 machines, they're very easy because they thread themselves. <laughs> the baby lock machines are, are the ultimate, you know, if I could afford one of those and I was looking to get both, I would go that route. Okay. You would, you would do the, the, baby lock triumph yeah the tri baby lock triumph i believe it is mm -hmm. is going to be like the machine that does it all now opposed to some of the other machines that don't thread themselves for you you've got to change all these things they're very complicated but if mm -hmm. i was you looking at getting into sewing and i was going to get you know like maybe a 600 hundred dollar serger and a 600 hundred dollar cover hem machine i would do that before i spent eleven hundred dollars on one that did both Okay. That's really good advice. I think, I mean, I really appreciate that input because yes, I was, I, I mean, I, I get, I think it's a big deal to just change threads. So <laughs> yes, man, <laughs> on a serger, especially. <laughs> so yes, I do have a, an air threaded serger. It's a Juki though, but yeah, the Juki is great. With yeah, it is a very nice serger, but it, like I said, it definitely tells me when it needs oil. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Yeah. So what what basic feet do you think that everybody should have in their arsenal? Is there some of them are seem sort of frilly? I don't know. Do you think that all of those work really well? Are there some that are better than others? What about off brand like Madame So or? Any of those that you can get on Amazon or. Uh -huh. You know, it's always good to use the factory parts for your machine, especially when it comes to using bobbins, bobbin cases, parts, things like that. Now, some of the feet will work great. It's kind of a shot in the dark on some things, knowing if it's going to fit your machine perfectly or not. Mm -hmm. One thing. I would do is if I were to buy some feet that weren't original feet, I would put the foot on my machine and I would slowly by hand turn the needle just to make sure my needle was not going to hit the foot anywhere. Mm -hmm. And then I would just make sure that, you know, it functions properly. Nothing's, you know, I'd go zigzag from side to side because if you hit your foot with your needle, you've got a good chance of knocking it out of time or breaking something. And mm -hmm. it's not really worth the money you save for that kind of, Thing to happen you know how can you tell if a machine is out of time well a machine being out of time we've got gauges that we check it with first of all depending on how bad out of time it is you can see it with the naked eye with just by looking at it the time way the timing works is when the needle goes down the hook comes around the back of the needle and grabs the thread Mm -hmm. If the hook doesn't come around the back of the needle at the right time, it's going to miss the thread. So okay. we're checking the timing of the needle to the hook. Then the feed dogs have to be in time with their thing to feed at the right time. Because if they feed when the needle's down, it's going to break the needle. If they mm -hmm. feed while the needle's up, it's going to advance the material. Then we have to check the time of the zigzag. We got to make sure that it zigzags in the right time. There's so many things you look at when you look at timing on the machines that it's not just as simple as just the needle and the hook together. Everything starts at one point and it has to work together. Is this true and for, with the, or, or for the newer machines too, or is this just mostly older machines that? It, it is true for all machines, but there, I have a lot of customers that are scared of the electronic machines. But what I will say is the older machines, like you're talking about the mechanical machines, you've got a power source and everything runs from that power source and has to work together as it goes. With an electronic machine, it's going to have electronic motors that do all these different things that the gears would do in our, you know, mechanical machine. Mm -hmm. So these little motors cost about $22 a piece. You just take one out, put a new one in, and it's self-timed because it has sensors that lets it know. So the repairs mm -hmm. are really easier on the electronic machines than they are, let's say, on your old touch and sew singer from the 70s that you've got to go through and time all the gears and everything like that. <laughs> Funny you should mention that particular one. Uh -huh. I, that's the uh, machine that I grew up learning on. It, you know, it was my mom's pride and joy, and I hated it. I hated that machine. Yes. 
much. I saved all my babysitting money and bought a Kenmore of all things. And, but oh, yeah. it was a good, it had the cams and it was, yeah, it was a good little machine for me just with starting off my first big purchase all myself. But <laughs> yes, ma'am. But, yeah, I learned how to work on sewing machines on the touch and sew. They just, they said, all right, here you go. Change the gears in it. So <laughs> I learned quick, which, you know, Ken started this business in 1971 and he worked on these machines. He went to Switzerland. He learned how to work on the old Elna Swiss machines. And he was a really good mentor. And he taught me how to work on these machines. And, and it just, I just really appreciate him. That's awesome. It's nice to have a, a resource to call, like you said, and, and a, a place to send your machine if something happens. Um, yeah, and I was just thinking about something. The first question you asked, I guess I should have mentioned this when you asked that, but mm -hmm. um, you ask about people who that don't have somebody that locally that can work on their machines. Mm -hmm. We've got four full-time repairmen. And we spend a lot of our time on the telephone. So we have a lot of people call. They'll say, okay, I've got this problem. We can fix a lot of problems over the phone. We can help you fix your machine in a lot of cases. Um, when we do this, we're going to ask a lot of questions. Mm -hmm. And we want you to call and don't get offended if we start asking you real basic, simple questions. But what we're trying to do is we're trying to paint a picture in our mind of what you see because we can't see what you see. Mm -hmm. So if I ask you like, is the thread here? Is the thread there? Send me a picture of it or something like that. I'm just trying to paint a picture of what everything looks like. Nine times out of 10, I can say, okay, here's what you need to do. You need to take your plate off, take your bobbin case out, move this screw, put it back in, give it a try. It mm -hmm. got better. It got worse. If it gets worse, it's no big deal. We know we did. We went the wrong way. We could go back the other way, but we help a lot of people over the phone and, Anybody out there, feel free to call us if you have an issue. And oh, a awesome. lot of times we get you back going. <laughs> you might be inundated with calls. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of time on the phone. Those calls might turn into customers too. You never know. Oh, my other question was, so serger needles are different, correct? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Now my Julie takes regular sewing machine needles is what it said, you know, and, and they seem to work in there, but the cover stitch does not. But, and then the embroidery needles are just a type. They're not a different size, are they, for the embroidery machines? There are a lot of difference in the needles. You've got a system number. That's going to be the length. That's going to be the scarf, which is the cutout on the back of the needle. Mm -hmm. And pretty much all these machines are going to be the same system needles. Your embroidery and your serger. Mm -hmm. It's probably going to be a, 13705 and like the he at the end is going to stand for embroidery it's going to be the cut out in the eye of the needle mainly mm -hmm. for the needle threader um there's a lot of differences i'm not aware of too but i mean they're there's so small differences you can't see with the naked eye okay the serger that you're the cover hem's probably at el705 but it is it's just very important to know that you've got the right system mm -hmm. needle in your machine because if it could be bumping so little that you really don't not aware of it, and it could be wearing something out. But mm -hmm. I would just go by the manufacturer on that, and make sure that it's the correct system. Okay, very good. Um, is there anything else you'd like to tell us about your your shop? Or um, this has been very, I um, think, very informative for people. I yeah. I well, well, we uh, we buy in big quantities. We service everything we sell. We stand behind what we sell. You know, this is a family owned business that was started by Ken. He think he borrowed $1,500 and had a set of hand tools and six machines when he opened the company. And we're, oh we're a, he's turned this into a larger machine, one of the larger sewing machine companies in the country. And he's done it by treating people the way that we would want to be treated. Mm -hmm. When you call us or you come in our store, we're going to treat you just like we would one of our family members or one of our friends, no matter where you come from, or, you know, we're, we're here to help you. We want you to be our customer and we're going to take that extra step to make sure you're happy and you enjoy your purchase. I know that a lady purchasing a sewing machine or a guy, um, is a big deal to them. Like mm -hmm. 
when people come in here and start telling me about their sewing machines, I was like, well, I bought this when so-and-so was born. Mm -hmm. So that just, that goes to show you how big of a deal it is when a customer buys a new sewing machine, because it's like a era of their life, you know? Mm -hmm. And I try to think of that when I'm helping people fix their machines and trying to walk them through getting the machine that they need, because we want you to enjoy your purchase and we're just here to help mm -hmm. you. We're here every day and please give us a call and, Give us a chance. I can testify to that being true because um, somebody there actually helped talk me down off the wall when a, I dropped a screw down inside my embroidery machine. That <laughs> I, have, I have a baby lock flare, and I bought it uh -huh. from, from your company. And it and I was uh, I had a thread nest, so I would to take the throat plate off. And one of the throat plate screws fell in underneath everything. Oh man, that was quite. A, I thought, well, I could just oh, yeah. there and or and so she was going to help me order a new screw. But in the meantime, my son-in-law came over with a long magnet and grabbed it. I was scared, scared me because I was afraid he was going to mess something up. But he got it. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Good, good. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah, always give us a call. If we can't help you, we'll tell you we can't, but we're going to try our best. That's that's one thing we're always going to do. Good. Very good. Well, thank you for joining us today, and I think this has been very informative. And how can people contact you? I can put it down in the description, your contact yeah. information. They can call us at 256-381-0161. Uh, just ask for repair or ask for sales. If you want to speak with somebody about a machine, we sell pretty much all the major brands. We got all the parts for all the major brands, all the attachments and accessories. You can email us at info at kinsewingcenter.com. My personal email address is brad at kinsewingcenter.com. And, you know, we're available pretty much 24 seven on email. We're checking it periodically. And that's probably one of the quickest ways to reach us, but, We'll turn around and ask you to call us if we need to talk to you or give you an email back. But I really appreciate you having me on and asking me these questions. I, I like being able to maybe help a few people out there, but maybe I've been able to answer what you need. Yeah, I think you helped a lot of people. Your sewing machine is like your car, you know, and you want to take care of it. it it's been disheartening, and I, it's not just me, but I've talked to a lot of people that the, all these little repair stores that used to be around are gone. They're just gone. Yeah. Which yes, is a great opportunity for you guys, but you know, um, well, and for, you know, there's a lot more people retiring than there are getting into this business. There's not, you know, there's few, there's trainings you can go to, but to learn, I don't know of many, many places out there a person could go learn how to do this. But another thing I would like to mention is we spend a lot of time on the road. We spend a lot of time going to people's house and setting up quilting machines, setting up industrial machines, setting up embroidery machines. And a lot of times we will service machines in different places. I've, I live in um, a place called Killen, Alabama, right here in Muscle Shoals, right side outside of Muscle Shoals. But I've been from New Orleans to Newport News, Virginia, working on sewing machines, Chattanooga, you know, within anywhere in the southeast if you if you've got a group of people that need their machines fixed in a town or service you can give us a call and chances are if you're not all the way across the country we might be able to stop by and take care of that for you all right that sounds great can you come on up to michigan <laughs> michigan yeah yeah we can make it get give me a few together and we'll we'll get up there and that sounds awesome we'll work on them for you. are you visiting any of the expos this year Yes, ma'am. We are going to be in Paducah, Kentucky, the last week of April for the quilt show there, for the AQS mm -hmm. quilt show. And I would love for you guys to come by and see me. I'm going to be with the Grace booth and the Janome booth. We're right there when you come in, right to the left. We've been doing that for about 20 years now. I've been going for about 10 or 15 myself. But that's the only one we do. Um, we, Like I said, it's a family-owned business, and it takes all of us here to make the make everything work so we don't get to do a whole lot of shows, but that's one we always make it to. Awesome. Thank you for being here and you've really helped answer a lot of our questions. So um, thank you for having me. Great day. 
You too. Thank you. What a fantastic interview that was with Brad from Ken Sewing Center. Be sure and check them out. And like he said, you can call him with any sewing machine questions that you have. And I'll put his contact information down in the description. Also, if you found value in this video, go ahead and click that subscribe button down below and turn on your notifications so you won't miss any more episodes in the future. That's it for today. I wish you all the best. Hold your loved ones close because life is short. God bless. Happy sewing. Oh,